Christmas. Gary and Dean, Gary and Dean, and Gary's got hairy hands. We run around and see the world, try our flung tails, Dean's hair is curled. We talk some shit and play some games, for legal reasons some names are changed. Sorry. Gary and Dean, Gary and Dean, chatting along on a new podcast. Gary and Dean, Gary and Dean, you won't get this time back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Series 3, Episode 8 of the Band Metal Podcast. Is it 8? That's a good question. I don't know. We should have looked beforehand. I feel like it's 8. I'm going to stick with 8, and if not, then I'll do a dodgy insert of 9. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Um, well, uh, first and foremost, um, apologies for the radio silence. It's been a long while since we've said hello in these That's mad it. times. Yeah, why was why is why has that been? Do you think? Um, well, from from my behalf, we, we were we were sort of the last episode. We were sort of midway through the April running challenge. Yeah. Um, which which we completed. I completed. You completed. Mm-hmm. So that's that's uh, <laughs> that's that summary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I I feel like for the last maybe two or three weeks, uh, work has just sort of consumed me a little bit, along with sort of really being over the hill of getting fed up with this yeah current situation. Yeah, um, you know, at first it was. Mm, Novel is the wrong word, but it was, it wasn't as, but I, don't, I can't think of the right word. But I feel like the last two or three weeks, it's really sort of gotten to the point where I've been like, ah, fuck me, come, come mm. on, come on now. I think I think novelty probably is the right word. I think um, the when it when it when it sort of first kicked in the whole lockdown thing and uh, the rules suddenly changed and sort of the way of life that we knew had, had had to be different. There was an element of it being, I mean, exciting is the wrong word, definitely, but the, uh, different and having to adapt. And I think once you've adapted across a few weeks, then you come out the other side of it and go, ah, this, this isn't as fun as it was before. I can't see my people. Uh, I can um, do the things that I like to do. You know, we, we've we been texting because lots of stuff has been cancelled. Um, that you sort of pin your year on, isn't it? So I think yeah. I, I think I think novelty probably is the right word, um, and it has well and truly run extremely thin over the last few weeks. I felt exactly the same. I think, man. Yeah, because I think it does get to that point where it all just keeps building up, and mm. there's no end in sight as of yet. And like you say, everything's getting binned off. I think Australia's gone. Um, yeah. And I got, I said to you, I got, we were going to Festwich this year, which I go to every year. It's like um, a tiny little festival in Presswich uh, in Manchester. And it's it's all tribute acts. So I can't even remember who was on this year. It was like Madness and the Smiths and who else was on? The, the Killers were the Killers on. And Killers were there, yeah. Yeah. There was lo- loads of tribute acts, and it's it's so much fun. Um, and I got an email, I think it was like Tuesday this week, saying that it had been cancelled, and that was like the straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, yeah. I've had enough, I've had enough to it. And it's all material stuff, you know what I mean? It's it's holidays and, and stuff like that, that that's been cancelled. You know, I'm, I'm well and healthy, and my, my friends and family are well and healthy. So I keep trying to remind myself of that. But it does get to that point where I've just been doing a lot of sulking and a, a lot of just going, oh, just fuck it. So, yeah, I've been working a lot and then just coming in and sitting on the couch and watching telly. So that's that's why I haven't had the motivation to run or the energy to record, I guess. Yeah, man, it's, compl- it's completely normal. And, and, you know, you're not a bad person for mourning the loss of... Uh, you know experiences because you know what what else are we here for really you know on this yeah. mortal coil um and so yeah as things get cancelled and as things get postponed indefinitely and as your year takes on a completely different shape you know it's perfectly acceptable to you know get a bit of a bottom lip going and thinking you know woe is me like you say you know perspective is is crucial i think in this time you know we've got roofs over our heads we you know our family and friends touch wood are well uh ourselves we are okay as we are and so 
perspective is good, but you can also still feel shit about missing stuff. I mean, I dread to think how we're going to feel next month, end of next month, when Glastonbury is supposed to be on. Like, I don't know what to do then. Mm. I might, I might pitch a tent up in the garden and just and just get wanked on um, cider for for yeah. for a week and just pretend I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna, it's going to be a really shit month because for me, for my end, it was uh, I was Glastonbury. Yeah. And I was supposed to land back from Glastonbury on the Monday and then fly to Australia on the Tuesday. Yeah. And I was there for like two and a half weeks. So that, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I think, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to pitch a tent during Glastonbury and then maybe like uh, surf in the bathtub. Yeah. And shit like that when I'm supposed to be in Australia, I think. Drink I Fosters. I drink, yeah, fosters drink Fosters and, and walk upside down. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shit like that. It's yeah, gonna man. be uh, it's gonna be weird. So yeah, that's that's why I've sort of disappeared. I've been sulking a bit and uh Yeah, same and I think I think sometimes you know when when we first started doing the little lockdown episodes, um it, we had a little bit of a bounce about us. Um We did, yeah. I know it's so... that, I, li- I listened back to one of them the other day and we were full of energy and <laughs> full of beans, <laughs> full of gags. Oh god. <laughs> Uh, which of course we still are, but it just is. It's it, you have to find the fleeting moments. And you text me during the week saying, "Oh, I've, you know, I've got a day off uh, Saturday, and uh, so let's uh, let's let's record then." And as well, Saturdays are the highlight of um, certainly my week at the minute. Um, I, I don't want to speak for you, Gareth, um, but uh, we were in a, a group that have um, quiz night on a Saturday, and it has turned into the craziest, most acid trippy. <laughs> fever dream you've ever experienced in your entire life aren't it, it what, yeah. what what a group that is by the way <laughs> acid trip is is probably the perfect um, <laughs> term to describe it it is very strange yeah but so much fun like we, we it, when it started i mean i'm sure everyone listening to this has done zoom quizzes or whatever because that seems to be the norm at the minute certainly for socializing but when it started it was just you know question and answer for a couple hours and that was it but now it's turned into you know, we start at eight. The last quiz that we did last Saturday finished at half past one in the morning. Um, the, the the theme was Euro trash slash biscuits. Um, <laughs> and there was like an opening ceremony. There was a dance interval. Uh, there was a, there were songs. People were sending in 15 minute reviews of biscuits. I, it was the weird. Gary got in touch with a composer friend of his and created this whole like dreamscape it was the weirdest fucking thing you've ever seen in your life um but <laughs> i i kind of pin my week to it now i kind of pin my uh, existence going right when's when do we get to saturday so i can drink a bottle of red wine and giggle with me mates for five hours 100 yeah yeah <laughs> same, same saturday's a big a very big release with the quiz and have a pretty yeah. and have a laugh it's good gear yeah um, and we, and well, just before we can just before we wrap up that as well, we we started like I said two hours of quiz, so we'd be finished by ten. Now it's finishing at half one, and then we've got a, a late night version as well, where no one signs off, and we're on we're on until like half four in the morning, talking all kinds of broken biscuits and bollocks. I, I love that bit. It always reminds me. Speaking of Glastonbury, it always reminds me of that last night of Glastonbury, where we're in the middle of a field somewhere dancing to some tent, yeah, some shit house music because that's all that's left, and yeah. everybody one by one. Right, we're gonna have to, you know, go now and get 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 some sleep because we're leaving first thing or they're packing down the tent that night. And it always reminds me of that where everyone's one by one. Oh, we've had a great week. See you later. See you later. See you later. It's the same with the quiz. <laughs> the quiz yeah. finishes and you get one or two that go right. Cheers. Good night. And then, <laughs> like you say, we're on till half four. <laughs> one by one, people are like signing off. It's, it just <laughs> tickles me. Just can't let go. Can't yeah. let go. <laughs> can't let go. That should be. My, that's gonna be. In fact, that's gonna be on my gravestone. I can't let go. One more. <laughs> yeah, one for the road. Yeah, rated. My, my um, dad's my dad's catchphrase, and this is when he gets drunk. Uh, he always says, "Better than stopping him." All the time. I love it. No matter where he love is, it. what he's doing, he'll have a Britney, and he'll just turn at some point and go, "Better than stopping him, isn't it?" <laughs> I love it. <laughs> right. What about if he's at home? What about now? What does he say now? Probably goes, it's better than going out, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he needs a new catchphrase, doesn't he? Yeah. Great. <laughs> um, so do you want to talk about the uh, the uh, April challenge then? Yeah, we should do, because I think this also leads on to a chapter in your current situation, doesn't it? So yeah. 
So do you want to go first? You you tell us about your April challenge. Yeah, cool. Um, so the, for those who maybe haven't listened before or can't remember because it was so long ago or didn't care to listen in. <laughs> That's the first time. probably more likely. Yeah, um, we, me and Gary signed up to uh, a um, a race called Race at Your Own Pace. Was it or Race at Your Pace? Race at Your Pace. Yeah. Race at Your Pace. Yeah, which is an online company that we've used before for for stuff. Um, but you sign up and say, right, I'm going to run. X amount of miles in uh, a calendar month. So in April, me and Gary said we're going to run 100 miles, um, which, you know, if you break it down, it's just over three miles a day. So it's, you know, just over 5K a day, which isn't a huge amount, but it certainly adds up if you start missing days and that, this time over. So I thought, right, cool, I'll do this. Um, by the 18th of April, I think I was on about 80 miles or something. I was, I'd, I'd smashed it. I was, I'd got so far into it. I was running eight miles, then six miles, then four miles, uh, like just on repeat basically. Um, and was really enjoying it and was getting out feeling, you know, literally bouncing out of bed, going, running. Um, but then I just started getting these pains in my, uh, left leg. Uh, and I, I still can't really, it's kind of around my ankle, but sort of top of the leg, um, bottom of the foot, uh, not bottom of the foot, top of the foot, bottom of the leg. Um, and it was really weird. And so I sort of pushed through and stumbled home. Uh, by the end of the month, April, I'd got 103 miles. So I did it. But from where I was in the middle of April to where I finished was not representative. I was on for about 135, 140, mm. um, but it didn't didn't work out. Um, and since then, I thought, right, I'll, I'll have a week off and then I'll try and run. I mean, we're recording now. What day is it now? Um, we're in the middle of May, aren't we? Yeah, 16th. Um, so I thought I'd have a week off. So I, I'd give myself until I think it was the 4th or 5th of, uh, of May. Um, I didn't run and then I laced up and went out for a run. Uh, and I got about 200 yards. I was in so much pain on the, the left-hand side. Uh, so I've not run since, which is uh, very frustrating. Um, and I was I was really worried, actually, when I, when I, when I realised that I, I couldn't run and it, it feels, by all intents and purposes, like... Um, maybe a stress fracture. Um, I'm speaking to um, a friend of mine who's a physio and she says maybe that's that's maybe what it is just because of the amount of miles that I was doing before. And I'm, I'm running on shoes that uh, I probably shouldn't be running on because they're well past their uh, sell-by date. Yeah, uh, I've, I've put a lot of miles into them. Um, but I was really worried that it was just going to so massively uh, adversely affect my mental health, not being able to get out and do an hour or, or more every day running the, running the streets, which was something that was keeping me so... Um, fresh and, and and feeling nice and bouncy um but luckily touch wood that's not happened i've been getting out on a bike and doing uh decent miles and getting a nice sweat on and listening to some tunes um but you know as far as uh content for a running podcast goes you know it's it, i'm struggling at the minute because uh, <laughs> <laughs> i ain't got no uh, i ain't got no miles under my belt sam yeah um, it's tough because yeah. when you when you I mean first of all you sent us a picture of your trainers and they are fucked down you you definitely yeah. shouldn't be running in those bad boys no they're falling apart um, but I I was I was thinking oh, I hope, I hope he's going to be all right without doing any running because I knew we, you were sending us daily videos you know and I was thinking oh shit I I don't want him to like spiral if he's not out there doing bits you know what I mean so it's mm. good that you're on your bike and it, it's not as good as running I feel sometimes it's you need that that I feel like I don't know the the running the pain slash pleasure thing I can only get from running I think yeah I know what you mean like I I I, talk, I go out now and I'm, I'm doing maybe an hour and a half on the bike and I'm I'm purposefully using a really shit bike in a really high gear so that I've got you know loads of and I'm wearing a, a rucksack full of weight so that I really feel like I'm putting myself through it. Um, but even when I get in, I still feel, I don't feel like I've had that much exercise and it's, you know, it's, yeah. whereas when you get back in from an hour's running and you flogged yourself, you know, you, you're dripping with sweat and it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, I think, especially cause I'm not working at the minute and I do feel a bit guilty about that where people like yourself and obviously NHS are out there doing bits. I kind of liked the putting myself through that every morning just to sort of have a bit of pain, um, going into the day which i know is completely useless but it sort of it helped justify the fact that then for the rest of the day i was sort of kicking around making stupid videos for a quiz group you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but it was i enjoyed the challenge and i'm gutted that i can't do it. i signed up again to do 100 miles but obviously i've, I've done none uh, I mean, i've done plenty on the bike but 
Um, yeah, it doesn't. It's not is the it same. So, is it so when you're on the bike? No, not at all. It feels very much like an impact injury, which is why I, I feel like it's it's maybe some sort of stress fracture. Um, because it it can it can hurt sometimes when I'm walking as well. Um, so I've just I just said to myself, right, no running. Um, for as long as I dare, um, and as long as the bike uh, sort of entertains me. Yeah, um, and as yeah, and as, as soon as I can get into a, a shop and you know get measured up properly for a, a pair of shoes, uh, running shoes, then I will do because um, I've got. I, th- I think it's my right foot that needs a rake of support, and my left foot's pretty strong, but I can't remember exactly what. Um, what sort of um, fitting I need, so I'm not going to just buy one it's, off the in- it's, interwebs. It's always good to, I, I do it every pair of trainers I buy, even though so far every pair has always been neutral on both feet, but yeah. I, I always like to just make sure everything's, you know, nothing's changed. Yeah, exactly. How was uh, how was your April challenge, sir? Yeah, so I completed it, I was just about, I was on a 101.9. Um, which annoyed me because I wish I'd have done one point one more of a mile. I'd have got a nice round hundred and two. Um, <laughs> but my mine was like you say, it sounds easy enough to do five k a day, but I was just missing days all over the shop. Mm. So what makes me laugh is you can. I'm gonna read out my weekly totals, and you can <laughs> see exactly the point where I started to panic. So in week one, I did twelve point eight seven miles. Wait. So, Pretty casual. (laughs) Week two, I did 34.8 miles. Better. Uh, Week three, I did 47.5 miles. (laughs) Uh, Week four, I did (laughs) (laughs) 77.6. So week four, I go, shit, I'm fucking miles behind. So I did uh, 77.6 in week four. And then obviously the final few days, uh, I did, I think it was like 24 miles, which took me up to 100. 101. No, it doesn't. Count them back up, man. What are you talking about? Count them back to 74, 77 plus 24 plus Oh, no, 34. no, wait. I, no, I'm, I'm lying. What, <laughs> what, I've, what I've done is I've, I've added up each week. Do you know what I mean? So week, week one was 12.87. Week two total is 34.8. Okay, right. Week three... <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? I do, yeah. You you made it sound like you'd ran 200 miles and counted it as 100. All oh, right. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Week four is where I started to panic and go, oh, shit, I've not done nowhere near enough. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I did it, man. Although, the only thing I will say is I've still not got my medal and my T-shirt. Which oh, really? I don't know what... Yeah, no. I don't know what's going on. Uh, if I'm going to race at your pace, can we can we fucking have a word, please? Because I want the medal. <laughs> I talked to her very for five minutes. Yeah, maybe it's because maybe it's because of your t-shirt. Because I got mine sent. Well, yeah, this just is the medal. What I thought this is what I thought, but my sister's had it, and my flatmate he did the fifty miles. He's had it, and he got a t-shirt. Well, I mean, come on, for fuck's sake! Is it? Did they send it? Were they sending it to yours, or is it going to your mum and dad's? What's the crack? No, it should be coming here. Well, I don't know, Gary. Maybe they wanted to withhold it from you because you told it up wrong. <laughs> <Matt's>. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, if it doesn't come by next week, I will be writing a strongly worded email. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, or maybe a, a, a passive aggressive tweet. Yeah, there'll be something coming out. Just uh, yeah, to try and start some sort of internet pylon. Uh, <laughs> did you see that? Um, did you see that internet pylon? Uh, it was a couple of months ago now. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, the the long story short was that a Tory MP had had a picture taken, and he was stood next to some Yorkshire tea, and so people started tweeting uh, Yorkshire tea saying, oh, "I can't believe that you in, you know you endorsed the Tory party." Blah, 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 blah. And the, the Yorkshire Tea Twitter was going, we don't. Like, he can go to a shop and buy fucking Yorkshire Tea and stand next to it. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and uh, the, like, they were getting rake of abuse. And this woman was going absolutely nuts at this this poor fucking intern, probably, you know, social media intern at Yorkshire yeah. Tea. And so he quote t- tweeted, uh, she was called Sue. He, he quote tweeted her and retweeted it. Um, so her message was underneath. And the, it started with Sue. You're shouting at T, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just brilliant. And it, yeah, it just it, and it, it it just forced an internet pylon onto poor Sue, who was just getting a rake of uh, people pointing out how uh, intellectually subpar she might have been for having a go at a tea bag. <laughs> <laughs> poor Sue. Poor Sue. <laughs> but it made me laugh. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun. Uh, so yeah, we both done it. Um, as of yet, I'm not got the medal in the t-shirt. Okay. Did you sign up for this month as well? No, I did a fuck. And I'll tell yeah. you for why. Because again, halfway through the April challenge, um, I felt borderline at the point where I've gone, I've bitten off more than I can chew, um, and it was probably a, a bit too much pressure than what I needed. I, I, yeah, a bit frustrated. Yeah, I was on the edge of going, I needed that kick up the arse to get out and get running. But at the same time, I was thinking, ah, this is a bit too much pressure of trying to complete the challenge. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, 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 completely, completely. I think sometimes it's quite nice. Um, as Dan said, Dan Dad, um, who we've mentioned on this podcast a of times, he, he said that it's really nice when you're training for something, um, or rather when you're not training for anything. Do you know what I mean? When you're just running for the sheer joy yeah. of it. Whereas when you're running to try and hit a target 100 miles or when you're running and trying to force yourself into a, a training regime for a marathon and you still have the fucking time, then it can feel like a bit of a chore. So, yeah, I get it completely, young man. Yeah, yeah, Good, 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 good. We had um, a message. What, what was it called? Um, uh, Phil O'Hara. Phil, yeah. He's doing the virtual race of running uh, Route 66, which is like him and a group of his mates. He's like two and a half thousand odd miles in it which is mad isn't it mental that yeah it's great i mean yeah we, we've had loads of messages on um on uh, twitter and instagram the last few um last couple of weeks just people checking in on us basically asking if we were all right because they hadn't heard from us isn't it so nice it's, it's lovely yeah i mean lee butler got in touch i'm um, looking at the list there phil o'hara sarah uh, flinton um so you know and various others so thank you very much for um for caring if we were uh, alive or not we're very much appreciative at this time um and uh, and yeah again you know talk to us online how are you how are you feeling how are you, do you have motivation for running um what's it like near you as well because this is something that i wanted to mention um dan dad who we just talked about there he um signed up for 100 miles to run 100 miles in april as well but had to sack it off because he couldn't run while social distancing because he lives in london which just seems mad to me he couldn't physically yeah. go out and run at the times that he was able to run because there was that many people around yeah, um, and he, he went out at all times of the day just to experiment, didn't he? He went out first thing, yeah. last thing, and he said whatever time he went out, it was so overcrowded yeah. uh, that he didn't feel comfortable. Which is just nuts, isn't it, really? Because, I mean, yeah, we'd spoken on, on the, the lockdown version of uh, Behind the Metal before about me running and uh, around where I am and there being a few people, and you've talked about people diving into hedges to get out of your <laughs> way and shit. Um, but it's never been as bad that I had to sort of stop doing what i was doing yeah not felt comfortable to go out yeah mad so um so yeah if you're listening and you want to let us know what it's like around your ends then uh then please do is it a bird no is it a plane no is it oh my god is it superman no it's hero of the week so my hero of the week is probably a bit belated, isn't it? Because it's all over and done with now. But it's got to be, uh, what is it now, Sir Captain Law Tom Moore? Yeah, um, yeah, High Priestess Tom Moore. Um, yeah, they, well, didn't they give him? A, didn't they give him a, a promotion, uh, an Lieutenant, honorary promotion? Lieutenant. No, Captain's higher than a Lieutenant, it's a Commodore, or I don't know, something, something higher than that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, he he's he's the hero of. Of the of the of the month of of the year maybe even yeah hero of life the the yeah, century I mean, so so let's first and foremost let's give him the praise he deserves he's a hundred yeah. year old fella and he's done how many laps did he do a hundred laps of his garden hundred laps of his garden yeah hundred laps of his garden to raise money for the NHS okay. Incredible. Yeah. I mean, and it, there was an absolute fortune raised. What was it, 35 million? I think, yeah, it's probably still climbing, but last time uh, I saw anything, it was it was, it was was at 35 million. Yeah, madness. Yeah, it is incredible. Um, however, there is a however, Dean. Okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, first of all, ah, I just banged my shin. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's karma because you're slagging off a hero. Yeah, no, I'm not slagging him off. I'm not slagging him off. <laughs> He, he's done an incredible job, right? But I just feel like the £35 million that was raised was donated by the general public who 
I feel are not getting the credit that they deserve. Yeah. Because what he's done, like I say, it's good effort. You know, it's it, he started this initiative and it's it's a great idea that he started and he probably never imagined it would get as big as it is. But that is due to the fucking generosity and the the, the effort of the the Great Britain. Well, it's probably not even just Great Britain, is it? But the public, man. Yeah. They're the ones that have, have threw in that £35 million or whatever it is. And I feel like Again, this is one of those moments where we look at the best of humanity and it is right there. It, mm. it is Captain Moore. He's he's the captain of this incredible fucking ship. But all the passengers on it, I think, are just as... Um, just as... Deserving of some praise in this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I just feel like it was all too much on him where I think we should all get I'm I'm always the guy right and we were saying this before we did the podcast I need a pat on the back I need I need encouragement I need I need a handshake I always need reminding or telling or just congratulations on on anything I do and yeah. I'm, you know whether that's pride or I don't, I don't what is the word for that what is there a word for it uh yeah you're a selfish fucker <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's greedy, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not. You, you need you need uh, reassurance that you're doing good things. Yeah. So also, because just giving normally what they do is when you do anything on just giving, they take a percentage of whatever the total amount is, just yeah. because they're a business and that's how businesses work. But they also waive that, so the whole money that was raised went all to the charity like just and that is a fucking i don't know what the percentage of what just giving usually take is but then mm. whatever it is they waived it and again i feel like that's it just it just didn't get mentioned or yeah yeah i didn't i didn't realize that happened that's a that's a that's a great thing a really great thing yeah and you know i, I just feel like we should all be commended and so that my hero of the week is Everyone, everyone, every every single person who donated, um, just giving, fucking everyone who just, you know, at this tough time when everyone's mm-hmm. on less money, by the way, as well, put yeah. into that pot. I think it's an incredible thing. Yeah, man. However, <laughs> this is another <laughs> however. There's been a lot of howevers. Okay. I don't know if you've heard uh, the single that I released. Oh, the- I'm nervous the, about saying this. Do you mean the, um, it was, uh, You'll Never Walk Alone, right? Michael Ball. Yeah, Michael no, Ball. I've not heard it. Featuring Tom Moore. I right. Mean, listen, again, f- I mean, fucking hell, it is so <laughs> shit. It's <is> so bad. <laughs> it's like, it's like if you go into one of those pubs that has um, a mobility scooter outside and a dog tied up and, <laughs> Three old blokes chain smoking at the door. It's it's like if you go into one of those pubs, there's karaoke on, and that's what you hear. Tom Moore singing "You'll Never Walk." It's <laughs> awful. What Michael Ball is over singing his foot, and in the background, Tom Moore pissed out of his head, grumbling, "You'll never walk." <laughs> I mean, no wonder it took him hundred years to get a number one, son. <laughs> 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 oh, you are out of order, you. I know, I know, it's it's really bad, but I mean, flipping heck. <laughs> <laughs> they should have done. I don't even know what the other option is, but maybe like a collective. Do you know what they should have done? They should have done the people that donated. Why don't we do a little clip of ourselves singing a line? Or I don't know. It was just awful. It well, was awful. Th- Again, why do you? Why are you involved now? Why do you want? Why do you want a number one? Leave it. <laughs> because because I feel like we all put him there. We all put him there. We, and now he's up there. It's like who's it like? It's like Jedward. It's our fault. Jedward became as famous as they became. And when they became famous, we all sat there and went, "Oh fucking hell, Jedward are annoying, aren't they?" It's our fault. We put them there. Hold on, hold on a second. Are you comparing Captain Thomas Moore to Jedward? <laughs> I realised halfway through that it's <laughs> not the same at all. But in principle, I'm just saying that number one single was awful, 
and it's our fault it was released. Yeah, but the 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 reason it's number one is not because of its musical merit. It's because he could have farted into a jar and <laughs> into number one. Uh, I know, I know, but I just I know you're right. You are right, and I'm wrong. But it just I just didn't like the song. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I I feel like I feel like we've we've gone into like the dark part of the internet where someone does something really pure and then someone points out something that should be uh, <laughs> lambasted later on. No, I know. So, it's, uh, when it's played on the radio and that, it just makes me cringe. And yeah, yeah, I've never heard it for the. I mean, I I I I don't want to hear Michael Ball giving his vibrato on the best of times, but not at the moment. Thank you. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that it's done very well and has raised a few quid. But here we go. I want to I talk about this, right? So um, this really this feels like you said the, the winner of Hero of the Week is Captain Tom Morton, and we've just slagged it off. Um, but I, when, when all this was happening, right, and when Boris Johnson was praising what the word, you know, him, him getting out there and walking 100 you know, the laps of his thing, and we were all, I, you know, I give money, we, everyone was giving giving money. It did make my blood run cold a little bit that the general consensus seemingly from the public was that it was okay for a 100-year-old man to walk himself to death in his garden to fund the NHS. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, it freaks me out a little bit because it's not for the NHS, it's for NHS charities. But like, if if Boris Johnson, if those guys had done their jobs properly, this guy could have been sat with his phone, with a cigar on, surrounded by nurses, having a great time. Like, <laughs> it doesn't. He, sh- he shouldn't have to. He shouldn't have to do that. Like, because no, this is no, a, I know you're right. It's a nationally funded, or it's supposed to be a nationally funded product. My tax dollars and your tax dollars should be paying for this thing. Yeah, and. Like, I'll take nothing away from him. I think he's one of the cutest men you've ever likely to see. What an absolute hero. He's from Yorkshire as well, by the way, Gary. And what a fucking guy. Of course he is. Yeah, the best ones are. What a guy. And, like, I take nothing away from it. And the British public coming out and is is, uh, then supporting it is sensational. Like, I can't put that... I can't say that any strongly. Yeah, same, Mike. I I agree. I do have to say that I agree with all of what you just said. But the idea that that a 100-year-old bloke should walk and, and and do what he did and people go oh no yeah so we need to we need to follow that up and make sure that the nhs is funded so that our healthcare professionals don't die on the front line fighting a disease it does strike or oh, a little bit of uh george orwellism uh it's, it's a bit it's a bit weird yeah i know and the irony of boris johnson sitting up there going well done thank you so much sir blah blah, blah. If you'd have put your fucking hands in your pocket, Boris, like say, yeah. you say, he could have lauded it up, Tom, couldn't he? He could have lived his life a bit. Yeah, he could have been on a private jet to Miami now, covered in millions of squids. Oh, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> on the tear with Michael Ball. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> um, so you did a run this morning, right? Yeah, I did. I did uh, 11 miles. 11 uh, miles? Yeah, yeah. Right. How was it? It was all right, yeah. I did, uh, I did it in one one hour 27, so... Nice, yeah, man. Good nick. Um, I feel like I'm, I can... 10 miles, I can run comfortably. Mm. And, um, maybe 10 and a half, I can run. But, but then again, I, I'm always of the view that the last half mile of any distance you do is always tough. Plus, yeah. I really needed the shit, so I was... <laughs> concentrating on <laughs> getting home so right. the last, yeah the last half mile was was tough uh, but nice. yeah good run it felt good to get out it's been i've not run since the end of the april challenge so it was nice it was good cool man good for you and so what's the right it's saturday today so we're uh we're gearing up for quiz night tonight the uh theme is eurovision because it would have been eurovision in rotterdam tonight so what's the rest of the day doing for yourself sir uh, my saturday is lazy af i'm nice. gonna just Honestly, like literally, like a cat, I'm gonna go around the flat and just nap in in any little spot I can I can lay my head. Ace, hey, so you're gonna I'm, nap. Right. You're gonna lick your own nuts. You're gonna sit in the corner, sit in a sunbeam, lick your own nuts again. Perfect. Yeah, maybe throw up a few hairballs. <laughs> I'm very excited about it, to be honest. 
Well, you deserve it by the sounds of it, don't you, Sam? Thank you, son. Any any plans on your Saturday? Uh, I'm gonna yeah, I've got to, to do my uh, bike ride, um, which would be nice. It's a bit overcast, a bit drizzly out there, so there shouldn't be anyone around to uh, annoy me. Um, get back, uh, put my costume on for tonight, and uh, tear it up with you weirdos on a, on a quiz. Nice, sounds good. Sounds um, great. Yeah, well, let's wrap, let's wrap it up there. We, we've done the same again where we always go, I've not really got any content to talk about, but we can do a 20 minute episode. And again, we've <laughs> talked bollocks. What, yeah. Now, 40 minutes or something? Oh, yeah, 37. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's wrap it up. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll speak to you again. We don't know when. We're not going to make any promises when because uh, these are mad times. Um, my good friend Gary Damon there is, is a key worker, so he's doing this damn thing. So, But we'll catch up with you. Um, stay in touch with us on socials, uh, our Behind yeah. the Medal, Twitter and, um, and uh, Instagram. Uh, and, uh, yeah, stay safe, wash your hands. Uh, what's the message from you, Gary? Stay alert. Stay alert. Fuck, you know, yeah, stay alert for that invisible airborne virus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, it's a goodbye from me and it's goodbye from me